Occasionally, we do want to write an equation formally in standard form. That is, recall that standard form is the form ax plus by equals c, where all three of the numbers are integers. They have no common factors. And the first number is positive, the first number being the coefficient of x. Now, there are a couple of reasons we might want this form. Typically, we want it in order to make some sort of comparison. There's only one way to write the equation of a given line in standard form following all of these rules. That is, if two equations are in standard form, then if they're equivalent, they're exactly the same. And that's typically why we have strict rules for a form like this, so that we know that if two different objects are written in this form, they'll be exactly the same if they're equivalent to each other. Let's see how to get this form. I'm going to give you an example that breaks all of the rules. So I'm going to start out with an equation in the form a number times x plus a number times y equals a third number. But right now, none of the numbers are integers. Um, talking about common factors doesn't make sense, but when we get integers, we'll have those. And the first number isn't positive. So what do we do? First, we'll multiply both sides by a number in order to get integers on both sides. These are decimals, so I want to choose a power of 10. The most digits I have after a decimal point is 2, so I'm going to choose 100. So I'll take 100 times negative 9.25x plus 3.5y equals 100 times 17. Right, distribute. And actually do the multiplication. You may use your calculator for this multiplication if you want. Negative 925x plus 350y equals 1700. Okay, now we follow rule one. What's our next step? Our next step is to divide both sides by the greatest common factor of the three numbers. Now you can find the greatest common factor by hand, or you can find it on the calculator. Here's how to find it on the calculator. I'm going to go to the math menu. The second header here it says num, n-u-m. That's where I want to go. And I want to scroll down until I find GCD. GCD stands for greatest common divisor, which is another name for the greatest common factor. GCD and I'm going to take the GCD of the two numbers on the left, 925, comma, 350. Okay, so the GCD of 925 and 350 is 25. Okay, now I want to find the GCD of that number and the third number. In my equation, the third number is 1700. So math, num, scroll to get GCD, 25, comma, 1700, is still 25. And maybe you knew that by looking, that's fine. That gives us the GCD of all three numbers. To find the GCD of three numbers, we find the GCD of the first two, and then of that number and the third. 
Okay, so what does that mean? We want to divide both sides by 25, which we can think of as multiplying by 1 25th. Next, we distribute. So I'll have 1 25th times negative 925 x plus 1 25th times 350 y is 1 25th times 1700. And now we'll actually do that division. We can do it as 1 25th times, or we can remember what that represents and just do dividing by 25. So I'll have negative 37x plus 14y equals 68. And I already know that those numbers have no factors in common to all three because I already divided by the greatest common factor. So there are no common factors left. Okay, so now we're following the first rule and the second rule. Third rule is easiest to get. If A happens to be negative, as it does in this case, we'll multiply both sides by negative 1. So I'll have negative 1 times negative 37x plus 14y is negative 1 times 68. Distribute, I'll have 37x minus 14y is negative 68. And now the coefficient of x is positive. I follow all three rules. I'm in standard form. Let's see an example where instead of decimals I have fractions. Suppose we want to write the equation 5 eighths x plus 5 sixths y equals 5 twelfths in standard form. Right, step one is still multiply to get integers. If you're really comfortable coming up with common multiples, you can just use the least common multiple of the denominators. Or you can just use one denominator at a time. I would use option one if I had numbers that it was easy to see their least common multiple. And option two if the numbers were more unpleasant. I'm going to use option two in this example because the least common multiple of these three numbers may or may not be obvious to you. And I want to show you how the technique works if you do one at a time. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 8. Distribute. 8 times 5 eighths is just 5. 8 times 5 sixths make that a fraction is 20 thirds and 8 times 5 twelfths, make that a fraction, is 10 thirds. Okay, well now my only remaining denominator is 3, so I'll multiply both sides by 3. I'll have 3 times 5 is 15x, plus 3 times 20 thirds is 20y, equals 3 times 10 thirds is 10. So now we have all integers. Now we want to divide by the greatest common factor. Looking at this, I think it's easy to see that the greatest common factor of these numbers is 5. If that isn't obvious to you, you can absolutely use your calculator to find that. So. 
I'm going to think of this as multiplying by 1 fifth. Distribute. 1 fifth times 15, that's 15 divided by 5 is 3. 1 fifth times 20, that's 20 divided by 5 is 4. And 1 fifth times 10, that's 10 divided by 5 is 2. And then our last step is to notice that the coefficient of x is already positive. So we don't have to do any work to make that happen. Our answer then is 3x plus 4y equals 2. And that's in standard form.